Just give me coffee. That's that, a Raj. That, that's just give me coffee. That's a Raj. You All you guys it. can see is my head. Oh, gosh, it's a chair. Here. <laughs> uh, pardon me. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, I got to... Oh, this could, this could get awkward really quick. Good thing no one's actually on the show yet. Nope. We're professionals here. Oh, we've, there's Joe. We've only been doing this. Now you can't see me at all. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Andrea, sorry. Makeup! Yeah. Makeup! <laughs> Hola. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Dane. Good Dane morning, Christian. Chan. Good morning, you guys. Yeah. As you guys can see, we're outside. Things got a little exciting this morning. And I'm going to tell you right now, if that cloud cover moves, we're screwed. I mean, it'll look visually, visually it'll look really good. Yeah. But you and I will be blinded to no end. Blinded by the light. <laughs> Shannon, good morning, Shannon. Why do I see raindrops? Shannon, I had coffee with your sister-in-law yesterday. Yeah. Yep. The coos. Yep. It was cool to, the cool to hang out can with I, her. Can Matthew, a, good morning. Good to see you on here, man. Can I get a morning, boys? Uh, you're down at the Rustin Point location. Nailed it! Yeah. It's only because I tagged it. But Makeup isn't going to help you guys that much. <laughs> that's true. That's true. And that's why I've got the hat on, because nobody wants to morning, see the bald Wendy. head. And morning, I mean, if Wendy. that sun comes out, bzz, you guys are all blinded. Blinded Good morning. Welcome to Luke light. and Rory. As you guys can see, yeah, Burr, we are down here at Point Rustin. Yeah, we're outside. We are right outside the Anthem Coffee here. Why are we outside? I'll take the wrap on this, as I usually do. Uh, <laughs> oh, I forgot to go pee before we started. No, the what? <laughs> There's a bush. <laughs> Can't get out of my chair. <laughs> Just take the chair with you. Okay. All right. So, no. The uh, is, there it is. Good morning, morning boys. boys. Thank you, Shannon. I actually got to catch you guys on my break. Awesome, Joe. I'm glad yes. you were able to do that. Um, actually, the reason we're down here, Shannon, is because this is closer to my mom's house over in North Tacoma. It's hot. And uh, <laughs> I was watching my little man today because the, the missus is in training. Good morning, Laura. And um, Yes, Jennifer. Yeah. yeah. So we actually met at this location, but the inside here, there's just not really a good spot to it's do the busy. show. It's busy. It's busy. I had a busy. chance to... It's smaller, compact a little bit. Kirsten, Kirsty, good to see you. So we're outside. Uh, Mary, good morning, yo homies. <laughs> freezing, freezing our Ganges off. <laughs> That's <laughs> the morning. ording posse over there, Mary. Oh, man. You got to watch out. Uh, no, I was talking with Kate I'm inside this maybe. morning. And Kate said, yeah, we're normally this busy. And it's really cool to see how busy that they are down here at this location because... In the past, we've done a show here, and it's, it's been. been uh... Well, these um, these condos are starting to fill out down here. The oh, yeah. and condos and construction's underway on next phase, um, which you know. So as it as it fills out more, I, it, this is gonna be perfect. To be quite honest, like. Yep. It's you know I I would imagine that this location is gonna be one of those locations that ends up having like Friday and Saturday night like, you know, wine or whatever. Yep. You know, so people can come down and. Yeah, see, I'm the kind yeah. of guy, I like to live out in the country, yet, yeah. uh, hey, good morning, Jesse. I like to live out in the country, but if I had to live in the city... Charles going to stay until he boards his plane. This is where I'd want to live. And they're piping out delicious smelling Dude, muffin smells. smells. so good. Oh my gosh, I'm going to go buy us a muffin right now. Holy smokes, yep, Michelle! Yep, I think we're outside of the uh, exhaust vent here. Michelle, my bell. Oh, good I think morning, I just, Michelle. Ooh, I think I Hanging just gained five, calor five calories. I think I gained five pounds just listening yeah, to smelling that. I was about to say, you gained more than five calories. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh! RJ, man, look at all look at all the people well, on here this morning. Is a UPS driver. Oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shannon, we gotta come see you. We were just talking about this last week. We miss you. And so we were actually across the street at Anthem um, downtown Puyallup doing our show, and we had a few people were like, "Hey, we remember seeing you guys over at downtown Brew." Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's right. I remember seeing us over at downtown Brew as well. Those were the good days. So, yeah, the thing is. Christian, yeah, I love coming down here too, especially in the summertime. Yeah. Uh, Joe says, "Hey, Rory. Hey, what's up, man? Uh, I love that Luke busting a song for me. Yeah, <laughs> he pretty much does. You're welcome. Uh, heading off with delivery, but have fun. All right, Mary, have fun. Yeah. Shirlene, good morning. Congratulations. Delivering flowers? I drove past your place this morning. <laughs> good morning, Kathy. Yeah, was already Got a six-year-old boy as of today. Oh my gosh, my wow. man. Wow. Happy birthday. Uh, happy young birthday, man. kid. Happy birthday. Good morning, yeah. Gordon. Good to see you on here. Um, Just ate at the Wildfin a few. Yeah, the Wildfin, man. There's so if you there. guys, if no, if you have not been down to Point Rustin in a long time, you got an hour to kill. Come on down, say come hi. Come on down. Luke will <laughs> buy you coffee. On our car. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh man. Yeah, if you're not from this area, Point Rustin used to be an old. Uh, oh sweet baby Jesus! I told you it was hot. hot as balls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry about me. 
<laughs> Don't even worry about sending Christmas treats. I you won't know, taste them. I just want to say Downtown Brew never made uh, coffee that burned our mouths. Good but lord. Anyways, no, that's a good thing. I'm um, not going to taste Thanksgiving. That no, you're not. That was brutal. Uh, growing up here, this area used to be an old smelter plant, used to be an old manufacturing area, yeah. and it actually turned into a super fun site because it was so bad. Kimberly, good morning. Good to see you on your Kimberly. Freezing morning, yeah. Yeah, yeah, freezing morning. That's why I got yeah, the they hat be on. The ice rink up soon. And that's why I've got the old yeah. coffee cup because in a couple weeks it's gonna it'll keep be me up. warm. Um, yeah, they will. And it's real ice, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, real it's ice. not the we're, fake we're plastic stuff. The kids. It's fun. It's fun. But this area, when we were kids, this area was like, like a horror movie. Like you would film a horror movie here because it was so decrepit and gross and right. disgusting and a super fun. It site. was funny because you'd be down, you know, like. Uh, like where um, like shenanigans is, yep. or you know Harbor Lights and nice areas, rollerblading, throwing the frisbee, throwing the football around like the boys, and then oh, you come a little bit further down here, and you're like, oh gosh, yeah, you drive through the drive through the tunnel, the honk your horn, down, yeah. yeah, you really <laughs> hope that you don't hit the other car that's coming the other way, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> but yeah, they've really just stretched oh, out. Man. I mean, it's really nice down here. They've really extended the waterfront and. Maybe even more desirable place. Oh to be man, that waterfront! It. That waterfront! It doesn't matter what time of year it is. That waterfront is awesome. Yeah. Um, it's funny because whenever I come down here, Christy's like, "I don't want to come down here." And I'm like, "Why not?" Yeah. The arsenic. And I'm like, "It's gone." Yeah, the arsenic. <laughs> We're not licking the sidewalk. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's like people freak out about lead paint in their house. Dan, good morning, Dan. Like, I was actually you? talking about you earlier this week. Nothing but good things that we talked about about you, buddy. Uh, totally. Shantae, good morning. Good to see you on here. I think I said her name right. Did I say her name right? Yeah. Shantae? Looks like it. There goes the train. Choo choo. Like where it's safe go. Great destination oh my for gosh. a date with your bride for that, for that special summer. It really is. Yeah. It really is. Actually, um, I, I went to Harbor Lights for shenanigans, I think, two or three times for dinner for high school dances. Okay. We'd come over here and um, actually, one of my favorite memories of all time. We're going to go down the Dan stuff. Spicer. Angela, good morning. My man, Dan. Um, I went to Mount Tahoma's homecoming one year um, with Justin. Okay. And um, I, I took a friend of his. That, uh, life thrown some curves at her. She is a uh, teen mom. And dad had bailed, and she had no one that wanted to go with her to homecoming, right? Teen mom. So I took her, and because uh, that's the kind of morning, gentleman Doug. I am. And uh, afterwards, so at their... At their homecoming, they had apple cider, like sparkling cider and cheesecakes. Okay. So at the end of the night, it was just all up for grabs. So we all grabbed a cheesecake and a bottle of sparkling cider and came down here to rest away and played football in our tuxes and dresses and ate cheesecake and drank sparkling cider. <laughs> it's good times, great memories. Yeah, good times. Ooh, 78 degrees. Luke's on his way. Yeah, oh, I am on my way. Because I am not leaving. Where's our man Joe at, dude? Where's Joe at? Joe is down in, I believe, Central or Northern California. Not One Northern. It ain't 78 degrees in Northern California now. I think it might be like, it might be like Northern Central Did California. you date your bride in high school, Luke? I did not. No. I did not. He wanted to. I, I did <laughs> desperately. <laughs> Every night it's the same. Word. I actually... Veronica, good morning. Good to see you on here. For those of you who don't know, my wife was my first girlfriend in seventh grade, first girl I ever kissed. And then she broke my heart and went on her way. It went all downhill from there for her. Yeah, in 20 years, yeah. <laughs> don't worry. I brought her back down into the depths. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> shoot, I gotta get on because I'm missing Pamela, out. Pamela, good morning, good to see you, Central. Yeah, Joe's in Central. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think Joe probably gets a nice little mix of not too hot, not too cold. Well, actually, has... probably really smoking hot and not too cold. In 20 years, everyone living there are gonna have extra fingers and toes from the <laughs> You're not helping Rory's cause. <laughs> I'm gonna be at an old folks' home and Chris is gonna go, I told you I so! Told you. Yeah. Uh, you old poop, I told you! Well, we'll have to, um... <laughs> Maybe we, uh, <laughs> Joe's down there, man. We'll be in Southern California in, um, probably like in January, January, January so. Oh, I like how Luke train. is telegraphed about himself all the while that loud train is passing by. <laughs> yep. That's how we like it. I love it. Now you don't really know everything. <laughs> He's so. a mystery. Well, yeah. hey, one of the first things I popped on here uh, was a mystery? question. Tim, good morning, Tim. Good to see you. Um, I saw this on Twitter the other day, and I thought it was kind of interesting. I'm Luke, watching. about time you start watching the show. You're welcome. Uh, awesome, Veronica. I'm glad you're on here, too. Uh, Question yay, is, Veronica. what do you now understand as an adult? As, <laughs> as, as opposed to what you didn't understand as a child. I'm and sure I'll, I understand less. <laughs> and and I'll, I'll start off by saying, I understand why my dad... 
Make kept, sure you take kept those vitamin the temperature D's up. about 68 degrees or less. <laughs> because it's expensive. It's freaking expensive. <laughs> yeah. So that's one thing. The other thing I could think of is I now understand why my dad didn't go out on Friday nights. <laughs> because when you bust your butt all week yeah. and you get to the end of the week, you're like, Oh, dude. You know what? I just want to watch Netflix and do nothing. You know how many times I've told, I've told my friends, they're like, hey, let's go out on Friday. And I'm like, here's the deal. If you guys uh, want to go make out. You, make sure you take your vitamin D. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. I tell my friends, I'm like, if you, here's the deal. If you guys want to go out on Friday, we got to meet at like 5. Like <laughs> 5.30. Like yes. right when it works out. Because if I go home first, that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> William, good to see you. <laughs> Once uh, I hit the couch, you ain't getting me back out. <laughs> yeah, Pamela says, going to bed earlier. Yeah. Yeah, which is, I saw one person's response was, when I was a kid, it was torture oh, man. to take to have to go take a nap. Yeah. As an adult, I'm like, I, I can do that right now. Oh man. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you're not married to Rachel. What the hell do you think you're doing? Uh, Cougs need to win. Got money on it. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I agree. Cougs are playing Cal this yeah. weekend. It's, they uh, got to win. It's uh, yeah. I just want to say, Pam says the same thing. Truth. Yeah. It, <laughs> dude, it's it's funny. Like when you're younger, it's all you can do to get out. And now you can't get. I can't get my entire group of friends together at the same time because not all of us are willing to like leave the house. I mean, like you got to pay somebody off. You gotta put it like a pool together, it, dude. It's it's bad. Yeah, man, I don't want to leave. Man, I like when I was younger, I would I would be like, dude, I want to go, I want to go here, I want to go there, yeah. uh, and now it's like, I gotta go three minutes up the road to grab something from the store. I uh, don't, I don't really need oh, it. Oh man, I know. No. <laughs> I just don't really need it. <laughs> it it's deodorant, honey. I yeah, uh, you'll be fine. Baking soda's fine. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Are you going to stream the new Disney service, the Boba Fett Mandalorian show looks cool? Yeah, I'm interested in that. Actually, I found out that if you are with Verizon Wireless, Christina, good morning. If you're with Verizon Wireless, you actually get one year of Disney Plus. How nice. cool is that? I love so, the perks that the phone companies are, are throwing out there. Like Naps are the best. I agree, Charles. Yeah. So, oh, man. I'm actually contemplating that after the show. Charles, you were in the, <laughs> Charles, you're in the military. I remember when I was in the Marine Corps, they would give us an extra half hour of, of uh, chow time if we were going to work out. And so we'd run back to the barracks, whatever, and then we'd be like, well, my bed's right there. Like, <laughs> and I've been up since oh, dark 30, 15 this morning. Food, yeah. bed. Hmm. We'd show back up at 1300 after lunch just looking haggard, like just a mess. Yeah. Not going to eat out all the time. You know what? There is some validity to that. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what? Yep. I and, and this is kind of like... Uh, value of friends and family. Yes. I, value of that friends is, and Yes. Value. Don, good morning, Don. Followed, good to see you on here, man. I followed you until the end. Um, <laughs> you know how I am. Um, oh my gosh! You know, yeah, I, I, I think with my kids, especially with Maddie now being in junior high, what I've understood is like, and, and this is kind of all encompassing, but what the small stuff is. Yes. You know, like I, you know, it's, when you're kids and like something bad would happen, like your girlfriend broke up with you, or like, or, you know, or like someone said something about you at school, like. You just couldn't see the forest of the trees, man. You couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Like, you were certain the oh, light yeah. was ruined. Oh, yeah. And, like, something happens with Maddie at school, and I'm like, sweetheart, I, I know it's tough, but, like, some you're, you're going to forget about this in a year. Like, it's yeah. not going to matter. You're going to look back on all this, and none of it's going to matter. And, and I think I realized that no more than when I was at my 10-year high school reunion. And people that you would have never seen, like, approaching each other in the halls at school ever were having great conversations and talking about life and family and you should realize that like none of that crap from school mattered. You know, you nailed it. That's exactly what happened in my 10 year reunion. Because yeah. I thought, well, there were some people that I didn't necessarily get along with. I mean, we yeah. never physically fought or anything like that, but I thought, yeah, these but are I just... Called them. You know, these <laughs> are just people that I'm like, I would not, you know. Right. And they come up and, I, and, they're just, and we're just having a great conversation. Larry, good morning, Larry. Hey, I'm going to fix this. Oh gosh, this chair! What's going on here? I just want to make sure this stupid thing does not fall. Arr, okay, right, my OCD is fine now. I fixed it. <laughs> I am not gonna be able to get out of this chair. Brian Reynolds, we need to talk about the uh, upholstery. Brian, Brian, we're gonna need to get an outdoor a patio heater right here to get Rory through the winter. <laughs> I'm gonna need some some yeah, uh, dude, coconut oil. Yeah, you're gonna hate me for this, but you ever <laughs> see the poo bear where he gets stuck in the hole? <laughs> And then they gotta starve him until he keeps wanting honey. <laughs> and it goes like all through the fall and the winter and like that. Screw it! I'm just gonna take this chair with me. And Rabbit turns his butt to like a table on the wall. Yes. <laughs> and finally, by spring, they get him out. Uh, today's generation sees what is right in front of their face and taking shots together. 
Right. Yeah. It's. Oh uh, my gosh. Yeah. The, I'll. I'll deal with this. It's that small stuff, man. You get to the. That sun's coming out. I, I talked to so trouble. many people I never really talked to, and I said it wasn't because I was prick, because I wasn't. Like I talked to anybody who, you know. I, I mean, you're different guy. now. You are. Now I am a prick. <laughs> I grew into that over time, and ah, look what society's done to it's him. Seasoning. <laughs> you can't blame Trump for that. No, I mean this is a long time coming. It's Trump's fault. <laughs> He's given Luke license to be a prick. <laughs> Someone out there will say that. You know, I do have to point this out, and I know this can kind of slide into our next topic. I heard President <laughs> Trump talking about Beto O'Rourke. Maybe the prick. Oh, yeah. And he was talking about how Beto had just dropped out of the race. Yeah. And he's talking to this crowd, and he says, "That poor bastard." And I thought, <laughs> and, and I thought to myself, I thought, "That's not right." No. I mean, I mean, you could you could think that you could say that around your buddies. I mean, I get that, but yeah, that to me, that's one of those those topics where we say, "You're not being really presidential." I mean, that poor bastard. I just it 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 does not sound did right to what, me. Do you see what Joy <laughs> Behar said about when he? <sighs> Uh, what did what did he say there? You got the you got the Rolodex. Um, you two this morning. Yeah, I know. We're like we're ridiculous, it. Laura. I totally I'm understand a, that. You two this morning. <laughs> <laughs> did you see Joy Behar said on the show on whatever View or no, whatever that no. is? Yeah. No, because I know you're a faithful watcher of the View. I just saw it like a clip of it. She's such a knucklehead. Like I'm like you didn't help. Like, so Beto's whole thing, right? He told everyone he was going to take everyone's guns. Yes. And it was like a matter of time at that point before he had to go oh, yeah. out of the race. Oh yeah. And. Uh, yeah, Joy was like, basically, she said, you're an idiot. <laughs> She's like, we're not supposed to tell them we're taking the guns. You're supposed to get in the office and then take their guns. And I'm like, you're not helping your cause either. <laughs> what is wrong with you people? Uh, okay, guys, I'm boarding now on my way to San Francisco to catch the Seahawks game. Oh, Atta boy. Get loud for jealous. Us, buddy. Get loud. Man, that's either going to be a fun game yeah. or it's going to be a long Dude, trip. We need, some, we need some Facebook Live. Oh that, yeah! I think, oh, man. that's gotta happen. Get us Charles. a live feed going, Charles. How do you feel about the game on? Hey, Monday? Charles! Before you go, happy Veterans Day, brother. Happy Veterans Day! You have a phenomenal Veterans Day on Monday. Watching that game, man, you uh, deserve it. The defiant liberals have no credibility. Pushing a big scam and sham, always pushing a false narrative. I tell you what, man. <clears throat> Charles says he will try. We'll. It's um, all we can ask. We'll bridge right into. Uh, what I wanted to talk about was you know the what's nice. Stuff. You know what's actually nice is Charles does not have to go into San Francisco. He just fly to Santa SFO Clara. Yeah. and then go set down to Santa Clara, so he doesn't have to deal with. SFO, there's actually are you a flying big to SFO or you can fly into San Jose. <clears throat> I'd fly into San Jose. Yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah, I don't um, worry about going to SFO. So, what was I going to say? Uh, you were going to talk oh, about. The, you, uh, you know what's yeah. kind of funny is look at the Seattle City Council. Michelle, good morning. Michelle Carnes is on here. The the Seattle Council man they. They're voting out Sawant. Oh yeah, so is that is that official? Is is she gone? It would be a it would be a a strong comeback. Let's put it that way. Okay, it'd okay. be a Frank Reich leading the Buffalo Bills type comeback. Oh yeah, point. that ain't happening. She's seven <laughs> points down as of last night with basically one more, two more counts to go. You know, she is she is the the dude. Here's the, here's the, here's my she's point. She's the mirror image. I think even mirror yeah. image is right. But I'm, you, I got I you, you buddy. I think you understand what I'm trying to say. She's like, oh, I didn't put it on Do Not Disturb. Oh, crap. That's all right. Um, I was listening to her talk at her um, headquarters Tuesday night. Absolutely, man. You hit up Rebecca, man. Tell her we said hi. And she she was just as bad as Trump. Oh, she's horrid. She was up, she was yeah. up there talking about, um, and I'm just quoting here, but she said, Goddamn Jeff Bezos. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a second here. That is so disgusting. I, I yeah. just, it makes me sick that our politics have gotten to this point where this is how we're talking in public. She's done it a lot. She's 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 thrown mud. But here's what I, I'm almost as disappointed as I've been in the city of Seattle. You know, and it's like I don't live there, but it, I mean, as Seattle goes, have fun, goes. Christian. That'll be a blast. He's going Veterans Day yeah. parade on Saturday. In I got something to talk about here for. Uh, for Quantrell here in a minute, but um, here's the deal. Um, I, I it looks to me like Seattle kind of said enough's enough. Like yeah, with her and with a couple of the other ones that they're they're getting out. Like, and I've seen it in the news a lot lately. Homeowners are complaining about the homeless encampments. Yeah, they're complaining about the smell from the RVs that are being parked everywhere. Um, the uh, Seattle police chief has just risen fire out <clears throat> with her tweet uh, a week and a half ago 
about um, the legal system and the repeat offenders. I mean, that's the Seattle Police Chief. The mayor has gotten is now like, holy, okay, I got to look into this. This right, is raising right. eyebrows across the nation. Um, and <clears throat> you're you're seeing a lot of people in Seattle start to speak up and say, all right. Just because we're liberal or just because we're Democrat doesn't mean we don't want to feel safe in our own city. Right. Doesn't mean we don't we don't want to have pride in our city, be able to take our kids down to dude a buddy of mine just last week that I an acquaintance that I talk to at the Y occasionally when I'm working out. He's like, dude, I was just at Pioneer Square the other day, broad daylight, and he got held up for forty bucks. Broad daylight from some homeless freaking Whatever. What right? did the guy do? He pull a knife or a shank? He, he, or? He's like, dude, he, he just had it in his pocket. I don't know if he had something for real. He was like, I, I had 40 bucks in me. And I, he's like, <laughs> he's funny because he's like in his 40s. He's like, 20 years ago, dog? <laughs> like, I would have freaking made some bad choices. And if you would have had a gun, it might have been, you know, he's like, but I just figured I'm married to kids. It's 40 bucks. I gave him the 40 bucks. Like, I don't know if he's got a gun or not for sure. He says he does. It's not worth the risk, right? So he's like, I just didn't risk it. Um, I'm like, dude, yeah, probably made the best, you know, smart decision. And so, but I, I, I truly think Seattleites are getting sick and tired. And Sawant, whether you are on board with her socialist message or not, has been a huge proponent of, what do we got here? Uh, I read their crime rates are higher than Chicago. They're getting there. The homeless yeah. situation she has out of control. It's the same Olympia. Yeah. Um, people are getting tired of Sawant's want desire for more homeless encampments more you know tiny village you know homeless villages um the the safe injection sites and stuff like that stuff is starting to fall on deaf ears i yep. think and yep. i and if she doesn't didn't believe it before tell you what you don't have a soapbox to stand on now so yep. you know the thing is i think it's healthy to have a liberal perspective and a conservative perspective. Yeah. I think it's absolutely healthy. It's called overlapping systems of government. <laughs> but when you go extreme liberal and you go extreme conservative, that's when you've got a problem. And yeah. she is the problem. And hey, Neil! There it <laughs> I was looking around. I was like, Happy Veterans Day, Neil buddy. Here? Happy Veterans Day. Neil, I believe Caitlin said that Neil just did his first flight the other day. That's his cool. first official Big boy flight. Not a boy I don't know. I'm an idiot. You can explain it better than I can. Um, but yeah, with Seattle, it it, it kind of struck me funny that the guy that was running against her. Yeah. If I would not have, I would not have voted for him. But to think that he was the conservative <laughs> to Sawant. Oh yeah. And he's not. No, he's no. not. No. But I think he's Jillian, good I morning. Think, I think he has a possibility of being part of the solution. Like right. someone who's a little bit more level and like he And he's business minded. That was the yeah. thing is he's a small business owner yeah. in Capitol Hill and the the thing is is like he gets it. He's like yeah. I I can have these liberal beliefs, these liberal ideals. But I'm running a business. But I'm running a business and I I have to have some kind of normalcy around here. And represent my constituents. Uh, moderation is healthy for a nation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's healthy in a marriage. Like, yeah. my wife, my wife, if we had to put politics on it, my wife would be more right than I am. Yes. But the thing is, is that it's healthy. It's healthy because we bounce off each other. Yeah. What about you guys? Uh, Rachel and I are pretty similar. It's, it's, um, it's interesting. Um, we don't disagree on much when it comes to politics, honestly. So, I mean, we have other things. Yeah. We have other things. Like you doing your due diligence. Uh, my due diligence. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it, the coffee hasn't kicked in yet, yeah, man. I'm, uh, Neil says, no, uh, did my second one yesterday, quite the ride. Oh, man. But just in life, proud of you, buddy. Keep up the good work. Um, just in life in general, Rachel's uh, and I are different, right? I mean, she's... Um, she's a more of a planner than I am, obviously. She's more of a get it done now. I'm more of... Well, it can be done tomorrow. Um, and so we do balance each other well, I think. I, I think that whether she wants to admit it or not, I've definitely brought out a little bit more of her spontaneity and a little bit more chill. Um, and um, I don't want to admit it, and I want it pisses me off, but it's probably a good thing. She keeps me on my toes as far as trying to be more scheduled, I guess. Be more adult-like? But anyways, politics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have to admit something to you. Oh, man. I voted... $30 car tabs? I voted against the $30 car tabs. And what I have to admit to you is that Jay Inslee also voted against the $30 car tabs, which makes me sick... Well, of course he did. ...to think that. Well, I get it. I get why he did. Yeah. 
for me, here's why. Here's why I voted against the $30 car tabs. They're gonna get the money anyways. I understand the message that we're trying to send Olympia. Spend our tax dollars better. I get that message. I get it, I get it, I get it. And maybe this is the way. Maybe this is the way that you shake up Olympia and say, stop wasting our money. I get that. <clears throat> My thought is, is that we went through this in 95 when they had the $30 collar tab initiative back then, and you saw what happened in the next 25 years, 24 years, whatever it is. It went up again. They they will find loopholes. Well, so find, what's going to happen? It, it went up again because they, they put other things on the bill that said yeah. it has to go up to pay for this. Yep. So what's going to happen, and I'm gonna I'm just going to predict it right now. Hey, Drew, good to see you, man. Um, what's going to happen is we're going to start seeing gas prices go up. Well, they say they're now filing a lawsuit, and they're using tax dollars to do it. Oh, I heard that this morning, and it made me sick. Brilliant. Sleep. Yep. Way to go, Governor. You know what? This is actually playing into my strategy. You keep on doing this, Governor Inslee, because you're going to get voted out. Which then, I guess the plan works. I just, I, 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 like, how, how, like... If Tim Iman is behind it, I would vote against it, too. I, that's that's usually my litmus test. How deaf, how <laughs> deaf do you have to be to sit there and look and see that the majority of your public is pissed off about car tabs and about where the money's going, and so they vote against it, and then say, that's all right, we'll just use those tax dollars that we have coming in to sue your opinion. Yep. To sue your opinion. Yep. Good morning, Linda. Well, here's the thing. Well, here, I'll tell you this. Well, I voted for it. Okay. And I'll tell you why. It had nothing to do with Tim Iman. It has nothing to do with, uh, you know, the fact that they're not going to get the money somewhere. I know that they're going to get the money somewhere. But if it can make it more difficult. TJ, good morning. And make them have to do a little bit more, then I'm about it. Because here's the thing. <clears throat> there is nothing in our state that is in a bigger shambles, outside of the homeless issue maybe, than our Department of Transportation and their ability to get road projects done. They have been working on the I-5 Highway 16 interchange for 18 years. Yep. 18, literally 18 years, okay? I, dude, I'm 39. I left to join the Marine Corps when I was 21 <laughs> years old and they had just started that project. <laughs> I assumed by the time I got out and came back to the state, it would be done and it would be a much better situation. And they are still working on it, 18 years. There is no need for an interchange project to take 18 years. And part of it was, is they literally, 10 years ago, screwed it up where the bridges were supposed to meet. How they build these things is they start on each side and they meet them in the middle. <laughs> and they realized, as they started to get off, they were off by like eight feet. And it cost an extra like $3 million over budget to fix the problem that the engineers screwed up. This is our Department of Transportation. That's why I voted Paul, good morning, Paul. Paul, I'm sure Paul yeah. has some uh, some thoughts on the old initiative 976. That's why I voted um, for thirty dollar car tabs. I know they're going to get it, but if I can cramp their budget a little bit and make them, and I understand, like, oh, you're voting against mass transportation. No, I'm not. Figure it out. Well, you get enough money and you piss it away enough. Maybe it's like, it's like you know when your kids want something, and you yeah. got to tell them like, Aaron, oh, you good gotta, morning. You got a budget for it. Yep. You got to figure it out. Well, I'm going to give Olympia a piece of advice. And I can because I'm in this state and I'm sure there's people And they're listening. Here. It just said on yeah. the bottom, Olympia's yep, watching. Yeah, Olympia's watching. Yeah. Here's the thing. Be transparent. That's all we're asking. Yeah. Be transparent. Yeah, it'll lose in court. But it'll cost us a yeah. million dollars. Be transparent. Because if you had told us, hey, this whole Highway 16, I-5 intersection might thing. Might take 18 years. Here's what we're doing. It might take 18 Two years. Decades. We're just preparing mm -hmm. you right now. The whole, the whole light rail thing. I'm a proponent of the light rail system. But when you lie to people or you miss I don't want to say lie you mislead people and they got to pay this big old tax on their car tabs you know everybody voted for it yeah. last November we talked about it and then when when people started getting their their uh well, we their three tabs, times yeah they're like what the frick is this three like times. well you you all voted for it, but at the same time What's it was it misleading yeah, it, it was, was absolutely misleading, misleading. yeah I, we get it. Our our area is growing. We know. I mean, we're in the real estate well, business. And part we of the problem it. too is, is and it, and I don't know if this is just a cyclical like foundational thing with this area, but the city planning in the in the uh, Brandon, good to see you, man. Like the Seattle, Tacoma, really Seattle. The mostly. initiative tried to cover too many issues. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. King County in in general. Ha! That's a smart guy right there, Paul. The cars are licensed. Yeah, smart man. Mm -hmm. King County in general has screwed up city planning for 60, 70 years. Oh my and goodness. I don't know if it's just become an institutional, foundational, kind of cyclical type thing or what, and if it just continues to get passed on to the next idiot that 
comes into office. Yeah. But there was a big thing on the news last year about the planning, like what the city had the opportunity to do in the 60s with the footprint of the airport, with the public transportation system at that point, and chose not to. And now we're paying the price for it now, and there's no coming back from that. And we just continue to compound it. And I'm like, what is it like the, the sons and daughters of the last idiots that were freaking running the city are now running the city and been after listening to their parents' whole life? I don't know what's going on, but the, the, the city planning commission in the Seattle area, King County, is just... Well, and I... And in the state in general. I know we're throwing... Uh, the Cougulins. I haven't licensed this year. Oh, no. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Um... It's not just the Seattle area when it comes to planning. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about Pierce County for a second. I'm gonna talk about uh, yeah. the uh, South Hill area, and I'm gonna try to get warm. For example, La Poma Firs used to be a golf course. It's now hundreds of houses up there. What have they done? Built right next to a freaking dump. To alleviate traffic on Meridian. Oh, dude. To accommodate all of those houses coming to La Poma Furs. It's everywhere. And this Nothing! Has, this has to do with the DOT. This goes back to the yeah. DOT. It's like Ording, right? Everything that they built out in Ording. Higher real estate taxes is the answer. You know what? It's coming. You know what? Either higher real estate taxes oh, you know or the I'm income tax is going to come. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. Because I hear what other people are paying yeah. in other parts of the country. And I'm like, you guys pay that much for your real estate tax? It's coming, you guys. It, you got to get it past the boat. And I tell you it, what, it, yeah, they're gonna have a hard time. Grab your grab your guns because it's coming. <laughs> yeah, oh, sorry. I grab my guns. Um, <laughs> That's personal. Yeah, uh, it's it just like fake, it's like an order it the same fake, problem. <laughs> it has fake plates on it now that they that the BC put on for the commercial. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, did someone get voted out? Yeah, she did. Well, yes. it's not official yet, but yeah, it's coming. She's seven points down, and they have one more wave of votes coming out of the three rounds. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, in Ording, same thing. Oh, yeah. Two-lane highway. If you are on 162 between 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock at night, that stretch of road should take you about 12 minutes to drive from Sumner to Ording. Yeah. And it'll take you an hour. And the funny thing is, is they built that new bridge. Yeah. They replaced... Okay, so they replaced an old bridge that was scary as hell to drive across. Which I like. Because it was... You were so close to the other cars. So when they decided to replace it and build that other bridge, I'm like, sweet, sweet, sweet. What did they do? Built a one-lane bridge each way again. <laughs> and here, here's the funny thing. Not a lot of people know this, but uh, literally, they had the opportunity to make it a bridge so that it could be used as two lanes each way. Uh -huh. And they voted against it. So now, And now they're already talking about the need to put in two lanes. In two, in a, and I'm like... Brilliant, guys. Just brilliant. Well, that, have some foresight, for God's sake. That stretch of road is going to get worse because Tahali is going to punch a road on the west side of the um, development down to Ording 162. What the? Since when does the odd couple show up in my neck of the woods and not let me know? Get down here, Ferg. I forget that he's nearby here. Yeah, sorry. Horse God. pucky. <laughs> uh, took me one hour, ten minutes to get from West Seattle to can Bellevue I, this morning. Can I level with you on that whole thing? What, what, Tehali what is a problem. Oh, yeah? Tehali is a problem. And I know, Mandy, I know you live out there if you see this. Uh, and you know, Brian. Brian. Reynolds. Uh, who cares about Brian? Oh, jeez. Um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know the guy was just ripping about the bolster here. <laughs> no, um, Eldon. Tehali is, Tehali is a, becoming a big problem. And, they, and they're expansion what they want to do with Tehali. I mean, there's a, they got a lot more they haven't unrolled yet, rolled out yet. And it's becoming a problem. Like Bonnie Lake and that whole transportation system in general. Well, it's just like La Palma It's going to become a bigger issue, man. They just, they literally just in the past, I think, six months put in a better road to get to Tahali. So you remember that road getting up there? Yeah. That was scary as hell, too, because that was right next to a Christmas tree farm. Yeah. And it was like, you're going straight up while cars are hauling ass down the hill. <laughs> Golf and you're like, oh, gosh, I hope that, you know, I hope they don't hit me. Yeah. So they've replaced it. So they got a better road getting up there now. But it's the same thing. They built this development. And they're like, oh, yeah. OK, well, we'll, we'll put some honest, cars. We'll build some roads now. How they built that development. I mean, you've been up there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's I mean, you can reach out from window to window and, and borrow butter. Well, yeah. And, yeah. and I'm talking, people are fine living that way. That's fine. They have too many people per square mile up in that area for the for the ability to... I mean, you got to think about how many... When you build that in there, how many cars you're bringing back and forth. You're right. At right. least two per household, right? right? At least two per yes, household. Yes, yes. And maybe three, four, depending on teenagers and that kind of stuff. It's like they don't even think about this stuff. Like when, when they get plans approved for these new developments, does anybody look at the 
traffic ramifications the right. department of transportation and the thing is i can't necessarily blame the developers no of course they're gonna i gotta blame money. the people that are running the city you're yeah. the ones that are approving the developments yeah you, you got to put your foot down it just it drives me nuts and i know money talks and it's not it's not as easy as just doing that rory i get it i get it no, it oh Ferguson's is coming down yeah. uh paul says all <laughs> golf courses should be turned into homeless camps bring me I, a patio heater i don't agree with that paul no. i don't agree with that I think we need. I think we need the golf courses around. I think we do. There is something beautiful. Where am I going to smoke cigars, golfers? unadulterated by women who are pissed off at me? <laughs> Matthew, good morning. Aaron, good morning. Thanks for jumping on here, you guys. Um, yeah, we could talk all day about it. What was the other initiative? Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. The other one, affirmative action. I, you know, how, you know what I didn't. I had no idea about that whole thing or what it was. Like, you I didn't? didn't read enough about it. Oh my gosh. With. Oh. I'll level with you. I'll level with you. I did not submit my ballot this time around. Because this, and this is why. Get nope. down here, Ferguson. No, I'm done. This, this is it. This is what I've said from the beginning, right? I've always said this to people. I'm like, just because you have the right to vote doesn't mean you should if you don't un understand enough about the... I didn't vote on that initiative. I voted on other things. I oh, you voted. I voted. Okay. I didn't vote on that because okay, I Okay, because I was going to say, your, no. all of your excuses are falling on deaf ears. I, I don't want to hear it. No, I always say, if you don't know, if you're not educated enough about it, don't vote on it. Don't just throw random things out there. Right. And I didn't have enough time, I felt, to really understand and research the issue, and so I just left it blank. Okay. Yes. So, yeah, it was initiative, initiative yeah. 88. So, you can talk about it, and I'll see if I can have an opinion. But yeah. Well, so basically what they want to do, what they want to do. I just saw these signs of it where it was like, keep racism illegal and I'm like well that's exactly what, the what hell? it is so what they want to do is they want to be able to take other factors into consideration when hiring somebody so race gender all those different things there are they're a secondary thing if they're they're not supposed to be the main thing they're supposed to be the secondary thing you're still supposed to hire somebody based off their qualifications however you can use those other things as uh, something to guide your decision I call it bull crap because it's affirmative action. That's exactly what it is. And I've said this for years, and I don't mind if this gets out there into the Facebook world or social media land or anything. I don't give a damn work. if you're black or white or a man or a woman or transgender or gay or straight or anything. If you're the best person for the job, that's who should be hired. It's that damn simple. And the fact that we wanted to make this affirmative action thing again pisses me off. It doesn't help the cause. Not at all. And I watched an interview from like two weeks ago, and there were two black women who were talking about this issue. And one of them said, are you kidding me? You're going to take us back in time by trying to get this in place. It should not matter the color of your skin, the stuff that you're born with. It just, it drives me nuts. Can you do the job? Can you do the job? Are you proficient enough to do the Are job? Are you the best? I heard yeah. something the morning that I heard something this morning that scares me. I heard something this morning that said, "Be me. careful, because they're going to make speaking English a possibility of being offensive and racist." Well, uh, did you see what happened in Paulsville this week? No. Which I would love to. I would love to hear you guys' opinions on this. Thank yeah. you, Paul. Fifty years of affirmative action has proven it doesn't work. You would think. Here's the whole thing. With you would think that. Everybody who's on the left side would think we should not be choosing people because of the color of their skin or if they're a man or a woman or anything convenient. like that. It really, really is. Yeah. And I was, I was explaining this to my, my son, Ryan. Ryan, who has a mild form of autism. I'm explaining this to him. I said, Ryan, how would you feel if you're the best qualified person for the job, but you didn't get it because someone else was... A, a, woman. a woman or a different color skin or that was the determining factor not the fact that you both can do the job yeah. but something else was the determining factor how would you feel about that he said i'd be he said i'd be upset he said i'd be pissed yeah i was gonna say he didn't say that but he did say i'd be upset don't and put that's a past the him, point though. and 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 people will think well your rant is your rant is is anti you know all this kind of stuff here's the thing i'll say it one more time so it's clear I, we don't care. <laughs> Look at Jason. He's fired up. Uh, that is, uh, there's no way of making English. Of this. That is un Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It should not. You would not think, Jason, but I got. <laughs> Hire gingers first. Yeah. <laughs> you would think, Jason, but I got something for you that's going to blow your mind that Paulsbo is doing right now that's going on out in Paulsbo. So I'll just, I'll say it one more time. It, if we are to be a progressive society, we need to move past 
the color of people's skin, the, their gender, their sexual orientation, their religion. We need to move past those things. Okay? He's not Catholic. I'm Catholic. It doesn't, that doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. We've worked with people who are gay. We've worked with people who are straight. We work with people who have been divorced. We work with people who are single parents. It, it, it just, it doesn't matter. It truly doesn't matter. Melissa, good morning. Okay, let me, uh, oh gosh. This guy's like fired up, Freaking man. Winnie the Pooh here. Ah, uh, okay, I gotta do this real quick. Ah, don't fall. Whoa, whoa, don't fall. whoa. Okay, good. Woo. This guy's fired up. Well, you know, he's talking Krista, about... Krista, Krista, you just missed my rant. He's talking about the English <laughs> language thing. Out in, it was either Port Townsend or Paul's, but I think it's Port Townsend. Okay. Um, in September, they unveiled the new gate that goes around the Veterans Memorial out in Port Townsend. Okay. And it's got two silhouettes of basically, I think it's Revolutionary War, Civil War era soldiers, and just silhouettes holding muskets. Okay. Oh, that's racist. It's be No, it's become a huge... So, people have complained that... Seeing them holding the guns is a trigger <clears throat> and offensive and promotes violence and gun violence. And so they want the gates removed. And so it was becoming such a hot topic they were going to discuss at city council last night. They had to cancel, they had to cancel city council. They had to cancel city council or at least cancel the topic because it was getting people were getting so fired up. Like standing outside the uh, town hall with freaking signs and all this kind of stuff. Both with, yeah. So we can't even have a silhouette and artistic representation of our men and women who serve holding a weapon because that's what they do to protect your rights. Good um, morning, Melissa. And it, that it offends people. I got news for you. If you're offended by a silhouette of someone holding a musket from the Revolutionary War era... The mayor says people have complained. <laughs> yeah, the mayor people... Who cares? You know what, then? We're trying to reconnect. Right, there, there we go. go. We're back. Um... Well, liberals and conservatives piss me off. Yeah, well. Do I want to tag Luke? I already tagged you. Yeah. It's just... Facebook. I mean, that's, Facebook's getting pissed that's off That's the us. level of idiot we're dealing with, is that we can't even have a representation of our military men and women in public because people are offended. <clears throat> are you freaking kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? You know, that's a historical thing. And and I, I can appreciate that somebody feels like they're being triggered by it. I can't. Fine. Fine. I Everybody's can't. different. Whatever. You're, Yet, a, you're a dipshit. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. However, I will. You're a dipshit. I will say no. We're not taking it down because it's historically a representation of how we became a country. It's because of those idiot. It's because of those people that you are allowed to be an idiot. Oh, the gate privately paid for surrounding, surrounding a Liberty Bell monument. Yeah. Yeah. Then you know what? Then that changes everything. Privately paid for. <laughs> I mean, just who cares? Just the fact that people would actually come forward and say they're triggered by uh, a picture of our military. Then get the F out. Like, I, I mean, I hate to say it that way, but listen. I got two things coming up this weekend. Two things coming up, okay? Tomorrow morning, I will be at my both of my daughters, both Maddie's school and then uh, Laney and Jocelyn's school. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. What? <laughs> Look at Paul wrote. Yes, they are. They are a shit whistle. <laughs> listen. For Veterans Day, uh, to be honored for Veterans Day, okay? I served in the military. My buddy Quantrell, if he's watching, and I told him I've discussed this a little bit, uh, served in the military. We we signed up to knowing that it could be the ultimate sacrifice, okay? Because we believed in this country. And, and for those kind of people, honestly, to disrespect us, that's disrespectful. To disrespect us, to disrespect the men and women who have gone out and died and, and given their lives you know, for the ultimate, you know, your freedom, the, given the ultimate cost, like, you're a disrespectful freaking asshat, all right? And we don't want to hear your goddamn opinion. I'll be honest with you. Like, we don't. Like, this is why I've said before, and I know people are going to, okay, I'm, I'm in a police state or whatever. Like, sometimes I'm like, why, if you haven't served in the military, should you even be allowed to vote with your freaking suck hole of a mouth? Like, it just irritates the hell out of me, dude. Like, I have literally, Sergeant Pate, I talked about him Memorial Day who I served with, who died recently, who has three kids at home, and you want to bitch about a freaking sign that's got a, an image of a musket from the Revolutionary War? Get your shit together, man. Seriously. Get your shit together. I hope you're not teaching your kids this crap. Unbelievable. On top of it all, outside of Veterans Day, we got Marine Corps birthday on Sunday, which is a huge deal for Marines. Good morning, and, Camille. And in my mind, that's the next holiday before 
Veterans Day. It's a big deal. All my Marine brothers and sisters are going to be out celebrating this weekend. Oh, David, you didn't miss anything. You're right in the middle of it no, right now. No, you're right in the middle of it, buddy. Um, all my Marine brothers and sisters are going to be out celebrating this weekend and uh, celebrating the, the birthday, November 10th, 1775, when the Marine Corps was born. Ton Tavern. I come back and Luke has lost it. I have, man. I mean, I'm just I'm just sick of these freaking weak-ass people who want to cry about a freaking thing that portrays guns, yet want to run and cower behind the apron of our military who give them their freedoms to be a jackass. So, you know what? All my veterans out there, all my Marines will be celebrating their birthday this weekend. I love you. Happy birthday. Thank you for your service. All of you kick ass. Walk around with your guns on your hips. Let them see it. I don't care. So, it's just a freaking piece of art, man. It's just... It's unbelievable. I'm sorry. I, I mean, I could go all day. I was so irritated when I read that whole thing. I mean, it's just disrespectful to anybody who's ever worn the uniform that you can't look at an image that represents them without being offended. An image that represents the people who give you your freedoms and you're offended. Yep. You're a jackass. Take away take away their rights. I'm done with them. You know, we are just... Oh, I just finished up last night. Melinda... Melinda comes on right when I'm calling people jackass. <laughs> yeah. Melinda's like, oh, I'm going to unsubscribe. Hope that wasn't directed towards me. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, Melinda. Melinda's awesome, by the way. I'm going to yeah. just give Melinda a plug right now. Acquire Marketing, you guys. Acquire Marketing is the bomb. Hmm. We we got into partnership with them about three months ago. And just freaking happy. Freaking happy to partner with them. Silkies and guns all day. Atta kid. Uh, yeah. Adrian, I good like to, morning. I like to say that we've gotten into bed with them. <laughs> I'm not comfortable with that phrase. <laughs> <laughs> we jumped in bed with the choir marketing about three months ago. It's been one of the better experiences of our lives. <laughs> uh, uh, so what I was going to share, uh, moving on. Ferg said soon. I keep looking around for Ferg I to just, come out of uh, nowhere. <laughs> I just finished up watching the second season of Jack oh, Ryan. Snap. Yeah, calm down. Oh, there. I'm through episode five. And let me tell you, Jim Halpert's I am hot. Grateful, because <laughs> I'm sure that that's not too far off what is actually happening oh, down you in Venezuela. I, I tell people all the time, you don't want to know what the CIA is doing. I am grateful that I do not live in Venezuela. Marketing is witchcraft. I do not. Or he's blushing. Oh my gosh, am I blushing? I told him we were getting into. Sure, it's not just this. Oh, oh. Yeah. Hey, oh. <laughs> um, yeah, you want to bitch about our country? Yeah, it could be worse. What? Just, just see what's going on down in Venezuela. Yeah. Venezuela, with their awesome socialist uh, regime Marines. down there. Uh, yeah. Hoorah. Yeah. Jim, let me tell you, Jim Halpert. I know we always. It's a bad man pajama. Let me. T- this... He was just undercover in the office. Okay, so you've been through enough episodes. I can share this. He had a friend that got. I'm blowing it for other people. He got. He had a friend that got killed in one of the episodes. Let me tell you, that man is on a mission. Yeah. He don't care. Yeah. Rules of engagement, out the window. <laughs> no one else follows him. <laughs> no. You know what's funny, too, about these, since we're talking about all that? You know, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's You're right. <laughs> so, the other thing about that is, is that, we were talking about Jack Ryan, CIA, you know, things are going on in other countries. These idiots that are, like, complaining about pictures of military holding their guns or whatever, like, try going to Mexico. And just walking around, like, and just walking around downtown like Cabo. Like, you know, going to the mall to go shopping in one of these places that you like to vacation at, where people are walking around with AKs, and it's a police state, right? To ensure, and it's actually there to ensure your safety because they want the uh, tourists to come still, right? Because mm-hmm. it's a huge part. Like, be thankful you don't have to deal with that, where people have to walk around our malls carrying, you know, AK 47s and all kinds of that other armed. I don't know if I'm going to get into it today. Uh, but I'm sure. Have you guys heard the story of what happened in Mexico a couple of days ago with the no. American family? Oh no! Google it. Google it, and then you're going to be pissed. Yeah. And you're going to you're going to wish that President Trump would unleash the Kraken on these Mexican the cr- drug the Kraken these Mexican drug cartels. Well, he's trying. They are evil. He's they are trying. freaking Nobody evil. Nobody wants them to. I'll just I'll I'll tell you guys this much. A family. Moms and children were killed by a Mexican drug cartel because they got in the middle of their squabbles. And on it, accident. It, it started on accident, but the evidence is now showing that the drug cartels were like... No, I'm saying the, par- the, the family got in the middle of it on accident. Well, the thing was, is I guess this family has lived down in, the, in, in Mexico for like the last 20, 30 years. Oh. And so they've had a an uneasy agreement with the Mexican drug cartel saying, hey, listen, we're just trying to live peacefully. We're not trying to do anything. We're not trying to be part of anything. And the drug cartel's like, okay, we'll leave you alone. 
kind of thing. Yeah. Well, what happened was is that something, there was a feud between two of the family, the two drug cartel families. One of these families, the American families, got stuck in the middle of it, gunfire. And so at first it was kind of like it could have been a misunderstanding, but then the evidence is starting to show that it started as a misunderstanding and led to murder. Like, they... Uh, apparently that was a mistaken assault. They were driving large black SUVs, so one cartel thought it was another cartel because that's why they drive. Why does cartel drive large black SUVs, by the way? It's always depicted like that in the movies as yeah. well. It's yeah. like, you'd think you'd want to fly a little bit more into the radar, like some jalopy vehicle. Yeah. Um, but that's the thing. It started off as mistaken assault, but then it ended with murder, where the drug cartels actually came up to the SUVs that they were shooting at and finished the job. Good morning, Jessica. Yeah. And it makes me sick to no end. Yeah! Oh, gosh. Burn. Oh, gosh. So, anyways, look it up. Uh, it's it's not getting as much play as it should be mm-hmm. in the media. Uh, it makes me sick. It makes me sick that this family is now forever affected because moms and children have been murdered by these asshat drug cartels. Yeah. I'm sure now I'm going to be on some watch list because I said that. That's yeah, fine. But you know what? This would be a situation where I would not have a problem with President Trump going, you know what, we're just going to come right over the border and we're going to take care of the problem for you because clearly Mexico, you can't handle it. I just, I read that story, man, I, I started crying. I just, yeah, it's tough. they're just trying to live their lives. Yeah. All right, we're going to change the subject here. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to yes. get my fat butt out of this chair. Bring that chair over oh, here, dear. Get in here. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Get in the middle. Get in the middle. Get a seat. Oh, there goes the show. Yeah, come here. Good to see you, man. How are you doing? Good, good. What's going on, good. man? Thanks well, for joining yeah. us. Absolutely. Uh, see, we don't need Luke. It's okay. Yeah, we'll do this. <laughs> oh, boy. That thing's going to fall backwards. Luke's going to buy me a new phone. Yeah, are we good? The warmest day of the year to be out here. Oh, my <laughs> gosh, dude. Oh, my Jim, gosh. Jim, good morning. Oh, boy. You're going to have to slide over a little bit. There we go. We're good now. <laughs> Hugs around for everybody. Yay. <laughs> All right, so Paul says, what's not getting enough coverage is ABC taking footage of Turkish attacks in Syria. And Melinda says, I love Rory's It's Fine about being on a watch list. Also, it's fine. the popped collar is awesome. So apparently she loves your popped oh, collar. Oh, I'm just trying to stay warm. <laughs> yeah. This isn't here. like, uh, I'm not like, you know, teenage boy. All right, so introduce yeah. our guest. Who so. is our, who's our guest here? Fergus, go for it. Tell us about you. I was talking a little. All right, here's what I'm going to say. Thank you. I'm going to run back. So it was, we set the scene. Uh, I had just got out of the Marine Corps. It was May. It was 2006. (laughs) And uh, my brother-in-law at the time, Edwin Lago, had uh, gotten me hooked up with a dude named Mark Dworsky at Fastenal. Mark gave me a job and said, I need you to go train first. He sent me to um, Lakewood Branch, which was you and Aaron. Was that you and Aaron at the time? Scott. Scott, yeah, it was you and Scott, that's right. Mr. Miller. And I, I just followed uh, Ferg around for a few days, and he taught me everything he knew about the product and what we did and what our job was and all that, and that's uh, that's how Ferg and I met back in the day. And Hector. Then, and Hector, yeah, and then Hector yes. came to you. Yeah. Yes. And then I went to Kent after that, um, and uh, we all were at Fastenal for a while. I think you left before anybody else. <laughs> so, no, yeah. just you're uh, like, I'm out of here. Just, yeah. we did something. So the audience, frontiers. the audience yeah. wants to know: Are you wearing a puffy garbage bag? No. no. <laughs> I, got, uh, I got on a scarf. He's warm. Scurf. The scarf. The scarf. He's the probably scurf the warmest out of all of us here. And for those of you who haven't seen uh, or don't know for uh, thanks, Jason. Find him on Facebook or, or Instagram, social media, and check out his photography. So, uh, guy does some amazing photography. A lot of stuff down here. Um, on the waterfront with the mountain and everything. Beautiful stuff, man. just shooting this morning. As a matter of fact, I nice. had a uh, meeting at 8 o'clock. I was cruising along the rest of the way and saw a bald eagle eating. Yes. So did the old U-turn, parked where I shouldn't have parked, didn't care, pulled out the camera. Always got, got your got gear Got the shots, it. always. So got what to. are you doing? I mean, besides taking awesome photographs. I work for Travel Tacoma, Mount Rainier, Tourism and Sports. Okay. Convention oh, Center, right downtown on. Tacoma. Is that what you were doing when I ran into you, I think, at the Tacoma Dome a few years ago? Yes. And you had a booth set up? So, so I actually worked for the Sports Commission side of things, and we merged recently. Okay. So it was a big announcement. We're all in the same house, one big family now. It's going good? You liking it? It's going great. Okay. Yeah. So I focus on the sports side of things, and uh, yeah, it's fun. Got a lot of stuff going on. Good. What do we got going on coming up? 
Uh, the big one is besides state championships and stuff. That oh, that's happened. right. Is, are the football games back down here? Football is not going to be the dome. Okay. They, they've moved on. It'll still be here in the South Sound. Oh, I saw you at the Mac Golf Classic. That's what I saw. Correct. Yeah, yeah that'll be uh, coming up in the next month or two. But the big one is Cyclocross Nationals. That'll be at Fort Silicon Park. Oh, okay. We've been working nice. on that one for a couple of years now. We've got, uh, oh, geez, 2,000 plus uh, pro level riders descending wow. on our area. Wow. Paul no is a uh, photographer as well, so he's asking Nikon, Canon, or Sony. Doesn't matter. Uh, whatever camera you shoot with is the best one that you're going to have. Uh, <laughs> I shoot with a Canon only because I, I know the, uh, the dials. I feel it's usually what you start with is what you... Yeah, you get, you get familiar. familiar with where the controls are. And, and then it comes down to lens. Shot, and, yeah. Yeah. Paul takes a lot of, of photos uh, of once during football season over there in Pullman. He goes over there and uh, he takes some really cool photos during the game and that kind of stuff. And Very cool. Yeah, yeah. you know, uh, they all make uh, great cam uh, cameras. Yeah. Like on Canon, Sony. Sony, of course, is pushing mirrorless. So. Personal preference. Personal preference. Yeah. That's what you're good with. Absolutely. So what's been your favorite event since you've been in this gig? Favorite uh, six, seven years. I have a favorite event. Because they're all fun. They're all right. different different sports, whether it's here on the water. Uh, 7048, probably. 7048? 7048. You guys have to look up this one. It happens okay. once a year. Uh, it's happened last two years. Uh, it's a race. All paddle. Human powered. Goes from... Uh, pretty much the Theophos, Tacoma, uh -huh. all the way to Port Townsend. Holy wow. cow! Yeah, you got 48 hours to do it before they pull the plug on you. Oh my gosh. Wow. Uh, Paul That's says, fun. so much more the eye behind, behind the, the camera, camera than the camera. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, he knows. Oh, well done. Yeah. Hey, you guys need to be friends. That's what we do. We're building relationships right here. <laughs> Community. <laughs> we became buddies with uh, your dude that you sent over to us last week to watch our show. Kai? Yeah, Kai. Ayana. Yeah, Mr. we're going to hook Terrell. up and grab some coffee. He definitely needs so, to yeah. chat with him. Seems He's like a, a good smart dude. smart fella. Smart fella. So how's the family? Family's good. Yeah, yeah kids, kids are growing. Yeah, all you got to do is just feed them and water them. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much. They grow real quick. Yes, so they my do. My daughter's now in high school. No. Santiago. I thought she was still this still, still. No. <laughs> I thought she just stopped no, until, no. Until, my next, until I saw her again. And then, yeah, she's, wow. She's, what grade is she? She's a freshman. Freshman this year? Yeah. Okay. And your boy? Santiago is in fifth grade. Fifth grade. Oh, that's what Laney is. Yeah. 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 When, was, uh, yeah when was his birthday? The 27th of October. Dude, are you serious? That's Laney's birthday. She just turned 11 on the 27th. Yeah. You know what Ferg and I were doing back in <laughs> nine uh, months before that, <laughs> 2008. <laughs> I never thought uh, of it that way. <laughs> Thanks for that. Yeah, that. we probably wow. shouldn't well, go where down was, that uh, road. Where was he born at? <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, at St. Joe's or at Tacoma? Yeah. Okay, so I was over at St. Joe's. I was waving at you. <laughs> yeah. you probably yeah. were. Yeah. Right here, got one. You? Yep. <laughs> Nailed Crazy, it. Crazy man. So, so you still stay in touch with uh, any of the old fast small guys? Not so much. Scott, I'm into a few every once Colt Fairley, good morning, buddy. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, yeah. No, I, not, not so much. Just I talked to Dworsky once in a while. Busy. Scott, I just saw recently because it's he doing? birthday. Oh, how's Big Jenny? Pass. She's doing well. She's good. Doing really well. Yeah, Looks like she is. Good. 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 Yeah, man, family. Remember when she left fast? Well, it was a big deal. So. What, Paul? Paul, what are you writing? You're too far. I'm just kidding. I know. Paul said, well, I don't want to get too close to you. We might, you might become be really close. best friends. <laughs> uh, brown chicken, brown cow. Brown chicken, brown wow. He's talking about 2008 when I said, Berg and I, you know, we were doing 2008 around the same time. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Never brown chicken, someone brown spell cow. it out. No. <laughs> brown chicken, brown cow. <laughs> Good. That James, oh, yeah. good to so, see you, man. Yeah, that was, yeah, I talked to Dworsky once when I talked to him like two months ago. Every time he reaches out to me, which is like once a year out of nowhere, he'll then say, hey, I'm going to hit you up next week, let's get coffee. And then I hear from him a year later. It's it's like an eight year tradition now or something where he's like, all right, yeah, I'll. Uh. Timing, timing is good. Yeah. So, well, and the funny thing is, he's got nothing to do. Like, I mean, his job he does from home. He lives out in Lake Bay. I helped him buy his house out there. So he just sits on his deck and looks out at the water all day while he's on his computer. It's not like he's got anywhere to be. So I'm like jealous. He doesn't go to the hub anymore or anything. Question for you two. Oh, yeah. boy. Why are you out here and not in there? Uh, well, when we got here, there it was pretty busy in there. Oh, there wasn't a okay. good setup spot. Gotcha. And we were just like, so we stepped out here and we're like, 
Okay. Well, there's not Fair ice enough. on the ground, so. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. I figured I was going to show up and there's more throngs of people watching me. Oh, gosh. Yeah, <laughs> and I come around the roundabout right here, and it's just the two of you guys sitting out here. I'm like, oh, where's the fans? Okay. <laughs> here I they am. all have regular jobs. Yeah. yeah. Darcy, good morning. Mr. Fergal's going to play theme music as he put, went through the crowd. Like, <laughs> I'm here. I know those guys. I'm here. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh my goodness! All right. Well, what else should we talk about? Any other? Uh... Yeah, you guys do your thing. Oh, oh man, we uh, uh, watch it. We're Boy, we got politics. a little fired up this morning. Yeah, we, we were talking about. I don't know if you heard on the way over here. The out in Paulsboro Port Townsend, they're trying to make the city take down the gate that's around the uh, the memorial out there because it's got because uh, some people have been triggered by the silhouettes of American soldiers holding muskets. This thing said it promotes gun violence, and so yeah, so I was oh. a little fired up. Yeah, so go back and watch it. He was that fired was up. Yeah, they, yeah, they really, <laughs> they really put some time and effort in that thought okay. process. Uh, the sounds yeah. of construction are heartwarming. Yes. So you're a, you're a soccer guy, aren't you? Soccer fan. To the extent. The sure. Yes. This weekend? Yeah. You go? It's going to be a bit. No, I'm actually leaving town. Oh, okay. Um, I've got a photography job up in Seattle. I'm going to take care of it. So what are you doing? I mean, as far as the photography goes, like, yeah. I mean, as far as jobs, I mean, are you doing weddings? Are you out there? Are you just are you doing just, events? Uh, so are you selling your stuff? I, I was trying not to be self-promoting. No, but, uh, be self-promoting. Oh, do it, please. Be shameless. I do have a, a, a meet and greet tonight. Uh, meet the artist tonight at T-Town uh, Trading on Proctor. All right. Uh, yeah, I've got some art that's hanging up there. So it's just conversation with folks, talking yep. about photography, talking about life, community, growth in Proctor, North End. Oh, we're promoting this. All that fun stuff. Today. That place uh, is growing like crazy, too. Yes. It's Holy cow. It's like crazy. So, you know, just going to go go hang out, have some food, have some drinks, and yeah. talk to people. That's awesome. Yeah, it'll be good. So you got a um, website you're selling stuff on? How do you not yet. Go no, about no, I will. I will in, in time. Uh, yeah. Right now, most of my stuff over here has all been word of mouth. Okay. So this client talks to that client, and all of a sudden it just continues to steam. That's the best way to do it, man. Uh, so it's good. I do multiple types of photography, uh, landscape, high speed stuff. Do conservation photography. That's fun. Yeah. Conservation stuff's fun. Keep an eye on the Falcons downtown Tacoma. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and just started doing some portrait stuff. How did you get into it? I wanted to ensure that I had tons of pictures of my kids growing up. It's growing up for me. Parents were big into photography, so there aren't a lot of pictures of me. Right. Up. And I didn't want that to happen with my kids, so I right. was taking pictures of them, and all of a sudden, images were blurry, so I had to get good at fast action stuff, fast action stuff to sports, and on and yeah. on. It's kind of just steamrolled. Yep. Yeah. So, so you know what? That's a that great. Dream. That's a great topic you bring up there because I've struggled with with the balance between taking too many pictures of my kids and being in the moment. Do you ever struggle with that? Yes, and it usually happens at my son's soccer game. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a delicate balance between the team wanting pictures of you know, the team in action right. versus trying to watch Santiago as he's playing and not missing. He's Luckily enough, I shoot enough pictures to where if I just looked at all the pictures, I could pretty much watch the game right. In, right. The, in frames. <laughs> just yep. flip cards. Uh, yeah. But no, it, it's a really good point. There have been some times where I've gone out there and decided I wasn't going to take pictures. Yep. That ended about halftime. Uh, halftime went back to the car, grabbed the camera, and started mm -hmm. shooting again. So it's tough. When you're ingrained to take pictures, it's, it's tough to right. get out of that moment. But to be in the moment with your kids doing something is a, a, a very good Good morning, thing. Gina. It's yeah. uh, it's something I realized probably, Kaylee, Kaylee's my middle daughter, and she is a wonderful singer. And I realized this, I think, in like junior high, where I don't even remember watching her sing. I remember watching my phone watch her sing. Gotcha. And so I, I took it upon myself the next time around. I had a, I had a little, just a goofy little tripod. I hit record and I'm like, if it gets it, it gets it. Yeah, I'm yeah. watching this because this is going to stick with me forever. It's tough. And, and it's tough because like you said, I didn't have a ton of pictures growing up either. So I want to have that legacy, leave that legacy for the kids right. so they can show their kids and their grandkids. But at the same time, I don't want life. It already goes too fast. Correct. Yeah. And that's the struggle yeah. I have. Sure. Yeah, and it's a it's a struggle I think for every photographer that shoots you know, friends, family, and whatnot and stuff because you're capturing moments that they'll be able to. Everyone will be able to enjoy later. But at the same time, you're right. Yeah. 
life continues to roll. So, do you ever you find yourself it. being the guy in the crowd or in the group who takes really good photos, and sometimes you're like, "Damn it, I wish I was in the photo." <laughs> <laughs> well, we need more Ferg in these. Yeah, things, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where if you take a ton of pictures and the photographers and all this. Uh, you're not in a lot of pictures. Right, right. And if you don't want to be in a lot of pictures, just be a really good photographer. And you'll never be in it. <laughs> take it. They'll never ask you to be in yeah, a picture. Yeah, so, so there aren't a lot of pictures, I guess, of me over the last decade or so because I'm always out there shooting. Yeah. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. So what, do you, uh, what would you tell the, the aspiring photographers out there? Advice shoot. to get going. Shoot, 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 shoot. You figure shoot. it out as you go. Yeah, and then take a deep breath and then shoot again. Um, you have to learn by just doing it, and I still screw up. I don't know how many pictures. That's the luck of digital these days, is that you can take a thousand pictures and you can screw up 900 of them. If right. you get 10 or 20 right. 50 good ones, then you're good to go. But, you know, you get caught up in the moment, um, and you hope you remember what the settings are and whatnot and mm. stuff uh, to where you don't miss something. But I, I still screw things up to where I'm so caught up in the moment and then I look at the speed or the ISO or whatever it is and it's wrong it's like damn it I overexposed it it's stuff square sorry um, yeah <laughs> it, it, more it to happens. Dan uh, Paul says honestly I enjoy concerts more when I'm shooting them interesting depends on the concert <laughs> yeah that's true are they torturing a cow over here yeah that sounds horrid that yeah hamburgers for everybody so do you do uh, do you only do uh digital or do you mess with film as well? I don't do any film. I don't have a film camera. Uh, I did film in high school mm -hmm. uh, and it's just too expensive for me right now to even go down that realm. Right. Uh, it would almost be like starting over. It's very time consuming too. It is very time consuming. Now, the other thing too is the development of that film. Uh, there aren't a lot of uh, places you can do that. Right. You send off the film. Unless you create your own dark room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, now, you know, so a lot of those images that we would film are, are fantastic. Yeah. A lot of digital technology today tries to duplicate what a film photog uh, photograph looks like. Just, just can't do Just it. because that is. Yeah. Steve, good morning, Steve. I got a buddy up in Seattle who. Um, Lightroom. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> I got a buddy up in the Seattle. The Creative Cloud. Thing. Yes. Yeah. Steve, so, where are you at? Where are you at in the country, man? Steve's on a... I think I shared that with you. Steve's like on an RV adventure. He's on a personal little journey. Yeah, with his wife. Yeah. Steve, where are you guys at today? He's um, He wanted to hit all the, the north and northeast places before winter came. And he's working from and, the RV. And now he's working... Yeah. And so now he's heading... He's eventually going to be heading south to hit all of the southern places in the winter. So that way he so misses all the So your house is storms. open for like football parties and stuff right now, right, Steve? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we can just make our He's way. He's got to talk to his daughter, make sure it's okay. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah, I, I've gone off and on into, you know, photography. You know, I got some decent equipment, and I spent, gosh, seven or eight years ago, I was just constantly taking pictures. I'd have the kids doing random stuff, and just want, you know, same reason. Sure. Want to make sure you want to have pictures of the kids, and I go off and on where I go on spurts where. For a month or two, I'm taking pictures of everything, and then I don't do anything for six, seven, eight months. Sure. Um, the one place I struggle with is that no one else in my family or my like circle knows how to do anything. Like, doesn't understand like shutter speed and ISO and uh, you know aperture, everything else. And so I, when I'm coaching and I coach the girls' basketball team, like, I can't take pictures of them. Right. You know, coach over there with the lens up in front of my face, and everyone else, I'm like, can somebody over here learn how to just point and hold this button down for God's sakes like I'll try to do the settings for you beforehand Mackenzie, so I feel like I'm missing on some of the pictures that I want yeah. um, so I gotta figure that out especially this season but. you know it's one of those things where you just have to set aside the time maybe in a game that doesn't involve anyone that you want to be taking pictures of per se right and practice and yeah. figure out hey what happens if Adam good seven, morning Adam you know you're just yeah it takes practice. No, yeah, yeah, it really does. And it takes a lot of it. Absolutely. So, luckily, a lot of the cameras these days are have gotten better and better. They help. And even mobile technology on their phones and stuff. Oh, it's crazy. Probably a lot of the stuff there is, is really good to yeah. too. So, you got? Do uh, you have the newest iPhone? Mick B. No. Good morning. I know that they're they're promoting the camera and all the technology in the camera on the new iPhone. Mm -hmm. Have you looked at that? I mean. I mean, for me, I still have an Android, but I really have no 
reason to go sure. upgrade right now because I'm happy with what I got, but I'm also not a professional photographer or anything like that. But I know that that's the one thing they're touting with this new iPhone is they can do all these wonderful things with their cameras. Uh, you know, a lot of the pictures that a lot of folks are taking these days with uh, their phone, uh, just because it's, it's very easy to do, it's very, super convenient. Mm -hmm. um, if you get good at it, then you'll still get great pictures, right? regardless of the phone. Well, it goes uh, back to what, what you and Paul were saying, that all it's the eye behind the camera. I think it depends yeah. on what you're shooting, too. I mean, you're not sure. going to ever go out, probably, and get pictures of Santiago in a soccer game with your iPhone. Uh, I, I'll turn on video. Yeah, if yeah. I have to. Absolutely. Uh, just, you know, but usually you're right, my camera's going, and sometimes the phone will go just to capture a video moment or whatnot. Right. So, uh, but, yeah. It's tough. Yeah, yeah it is tough. Gotta, and, you know, what you're doing, when we were like in Hawaii, you know, like in the summer, going around, and I'll take certain images with my phone, mm -hmm. you know, just quick captures and stuff. But, like, when we were at Waimea Falls and I want to get an epic shot, you know, then I got the DSLR out, you know, sure. set up, and you know, you want to take night shot, and you want to get on the tripod and make sure your exposure. You know, something to think about too is that you can get really good at the camera gear that you have, but a lot of the most interesting pictures that are taken are one in which the perspective is different. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, get good with what you got, whether right. it's your, your iPhone or whatever it may be, uh, and then try to think differently. Uh, you know, get low get a different angle and stuff. Right. Present the, the image in a way that folks wouldn't necessarily think of, okay. and all of a sudden it becomes really interesting because you're shooting at a lower profile from the left or the right or high. I watched a video a while ago. Do you know Fro Nose Photo? Yes. Yeah, so I watched I Jerry. envy that guy's hair. Oh, gosh. Sometimes. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot of hair. Well, to, he can't get rid of it now, though, because it's a deal. Like, yeah. So he, yeah. he did a video one time that I watched, and it was just using, like, a yard gnome. And he just set it in the same spot, and he took 10 or 12 different photos of it from different angles, up, down, side, different lighting, yep. using different thirds of the you know the frame and all that. Yep. And it was amazing, like how all 12 photos you almost could swear were a different gnome. <laughs> like I mean, just because sure. of the perspectives that he was giving. And it Absolutely. Was, it was really cool just to kind of see how that eye works. Yes. You know that photographer's eye works, and they, how they, especially once you've been doing it as long as like you have, that you see that that quickly like you can pick up on certain things that much quicker um, yeah you'll also find as you take more and more pictures too that you get really good at knowing what you're morning Charles shoot, whether it's uh, you know if I'm shooting Santiago mm -hmm. for, for example last weekend he was out in Enoqua uh, we were driving to this game like, where the heck is this field it's out in the yeah. um, and then it opened up and there was Rainier in the backdrop mm -hmm. and so it turned into a Okay, I know I'm going to be shooting Santiago and his team, but I need to be in a spot to where the mountain is also present as well. Yeah. Compose it to where I'm focused on the kids, but the mountain is still there. It turns present. it into a, a very different image. Um, it it just makes it interesting soccer. and unique. And stuff, yeah, so. that's cool. Mm. Yeah, I love yeah. It. perspective. That's it. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, where's the uh, where's your thing again tonight? Put it out there for all of you oh. uh, aspiring photographers. T Town Trading Company. It's in Proctor District, uh, right up the hill from here, as a matter of fact. Uh, from four to seven. Yeah. Just hanging out. Try to have something to eat, a drink, talk. Yeah. So if you guys have questions, you guys want to learn more about photography, Ferg's your guy tonight, four to seven, T Town. Only tonight. Yeah. Where can well, we find you on Instagram? Always, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you would have to ask that. <laughs> My Instagram handle is at Kanai Aupuni. It's my middle name. Yeah. Uh, Good luck Kanai with that. was already taken. Some guy in Brazil has it already, so I had the to nerve. My full middle name. But it's still a tough one, for folks, to, uh, to figure out. So it's K A N A I A U P U N E. Run that back. Yeah. Or you can just look at me and I'm following him and uh, That's a great start idea. typing it in. <laughs> Thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and go that route. So um, a lot of good stuff on there um, from Fergus and, and his images also out on his Facebook Yes, Charles, page. I did not get the memo. I'm keeping it Northwest. Yeah. Drone photography. Oof, I get questions on that, too. I am not a drone guy. Um, it's just it's another realm to, yeah. to be really good at, and there's a lot of demand for drone photography. Um, I'm just not there. That's not my thing right now. Yeah. But it, it probably should be based on everything that's going on. 
Uh, underwater stuff would be very cool to get into. Yeah. So that's all water housings and all that type mm. of stuff. A lot um, of equipment. Yeah, so <laughs> water, air, and that air up there. Yeah, yeah. photography is cool. Up there. I'm sure. There's a lot of guys here in Tacoma that specialize in it as well, too. Yeah, yeah we know a couple with uh, real estate photography and whatnot that you know do drone images for yeah. us. You know, if it's a large property that we want to get the whole layout. But sure. It's kind of a niche. Um, kind of a niche deal in the real estate world for sure. So uh, it's fun. It's cool. It's cool. And the cameras uh, on drones these days are getting better and better. Oh, my yeah. buddy Jeff, um, actually, uh, he's on my Instagram, Jeff Reynolds. He does. He travels a lot, mm -hmm. um, and he does a lot of drone GoPro photography. And he does some really cool stuff with it. Like, just really cool stuff. And why is it all cool? Um, it's just perspective. Yeah. There ding, you ding, go. ding, yes. ding, 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 ding. See? He was, yeah, he, was, he was on it. Yeah, it, it is. It's, it's perspective. perspective. Um, Stuff you don't see, things you don't yeah. see. Yeah. And he always gives you a, just kind of a different, because he plays with a lot, a lot up in Seattle yeah. and stuff where he lives and just yeah, trying different things. And sure. um, gosh, I mean, he's done some real estate videos with it just for fun, where I think he's just bored. Um, <laughs> and all of a sudden, it's going along low to the ground behind his footsteps and you're seeing him cruise down you know an alley or whatever at a Absolutely. different picking up things that i would never see you know it's really kind of cool so yeah that yeah. perspective is, is just different so anyway well it's awesome dude yeah i'm glad you came down man yeah you know i've been uh wanting to catch up with you guys at some point it's been, yeah. it's been a little while and then you guys so it's funny. I, I wasn't even thinking that you Yeah. <laughs> Just there. Who the hell are you guys down there? I yeah. know about this high. So, and I do have a coworker that said I should come Laura, back good morning. stay and not go back to work. But I, I That's a good coworker. <laughs> you should keep them around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving you. <laughs> She's pretty smart. Yeah. <laughs> she is now. Yeah. If she wasn't before, she is now. Yeah. Go ahead and just so, leave yeah. for the day, Ferg. Okay. Yeah, I like where your head's at. That, that'll that work really well. <laughs> With everything else I have going on. So, and then, do you guys live on this side? Over here in this area of Tacoma? I'm actually down over by uh, Stadium. Oh, okay. Right now. Yeah, gotcha. the Stadium District. There is an anthem over there. Oh, speaking of anthem. Yeah. Did yep. you guys ask about the ping pong tournament they got going on? No. There's, I, I heard about it. It's, yeah, you should ask us. I think it's up in the Stadium District. It's, I think it's tomorrow, there. I believe. That's cool. Yep. They yeah. posted something yep. on that one of their pages about that. So. I'm out of town. Otherwise, I'd go. You're out of town. Ferg's out of here. Ferg is in. I play. I play street rules ping pong. So, if I don't like how something's going, I'll throw the paddle at you. Yeah. <laughs> so where are the kids going to school then? <laughs> they school this year. Santiago's at St. Pat's. Me okay. at Bellarmine. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So, but the whole ping pong thing and throwing the paddle. That's actually kind of funny. I I would have thought to throw a paddle at the guy that I was playing with. Long story short, he was the <laughs> he was the pro. I was out of town, um, and when I say pro, he was literally a pro. Um, he was taking on all comers. There was a ping pong tournament. Coworker and I were there. We had a great time, and the local pros like outplayed me here. Great. I signed up, stepped up. He grabbed a clipboard. Clipboard. He's like, let's go. I'm like. <laughs> he handed my studio with a clipboard. With a clipboard. <laughs> with a clipboard. He was able to uh, put spin on it and everything. Oh my gosh. Clipboard. That is wow. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I was pissed at first, but then it was like, wow, this is actually amazing. I got whooped by somebody with a clipboard. That's, like, that's a story uh, you could share the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> But that's like I, when I used to work in golf course. I used to work at Trophy Lake when I was, you know, a teenager out in Port Orchard. And our golf pro, Eric Lohman, he'll probably see this and he's an arrogant ass. So um, <laughs> he'll just relish this moment. And if you didn't remember it, he'll go home and like drink to it tonight. But um, he golfed for UCLA. He was UCLA's number one golfer. He golfed against Tiger Woods, you know, in college and all this. And um, he's, he's kind of one of those guys. That, district. I have a date that. In that Dude, area that tomorrow, paddles. might be a plan. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> go get them and uh, bring your clipboard. So Loman could have gone. Loman could have gone on PGA Tour kind of a deal, but he went and took golf course management and um, that route. And uh, he was so good. I mean, this guy that like broke the course record, a uh, fifth into a bottle of whiskey, like, and he comes up to the range one day, and I'm hitting, you know, I'm right handed. He's right handed, and I got the driver out. And uh, my buddy's up there who's left-handed. And I, you know, if I get it to straighten out, I can rip it pretty far. I can get it out there 300 yards, you know, just really get the, get into it with my length. And he comes up there and he's like, hey, Weaver, um, 
I'll bet you, I'll bet you a bottle that I can hit it further with you with the left-handed club. And I'm like, deal. <laughs> <laughs> deal. And so I just rip it. And I, I don't know how far I hit it, you know, probably close to 300 yards. And uh, he grabs the left-handed club, and I'm like, this is going to be funny. He's going to be trying to hit left-handed. And he goes around to the right-hand side and then flips it upside down. So it's pointing down. Oh, my gosh. And just distance is my shot <laughs> by oh, like 50 wow. yards and he looks at me and he's like i'll take a bottle of jack <laughs> and he walks off oh, and i'm like that's amazing i hate you <laughs> i'm like yeah he's I one of those know. guys that likes to bounce the ball and oh the club yeah and then, and freaking then hits it out of the air yeah. <laughs> just unreal so anywho nice. all right this well dude great. thanks for coming down man yeah we'll have to do it again where we really plan out a an hour get get you on here dude freaking I, I wanted talk to talk about whatever you want to talk about. Yeah, you know, it wasn't going to work, but I literally wanted to to slide into the frame, <laughs> <laughs> just knock everything down. Well, no, it's just like from yeah. the side. It's like here comes hey, third. Like Saturday Night Live. When, yes. they're, when they're in the chairs that slide, like hey, here I am. Yes. Chris Farley I coming like in. That. <laughs> we need to build that studio. Yeah, we do. Absolutely. So, Thanks so. for having me on, guys. Dude, Appreciate anytime, it. literally anytime, guys. My good, my good buddy Fur here. It's been too long since I've seen you, man. Thanks for coming by. If you got nothing to do tonight, go out and talk some shop, some Photoshop with uh, with our man Fur. Four to seven. Fun. Four to seven. T Town. T Town. Yep. So Proctor. Proctor. We're gonna put it on our page. So if you're curious, take a look at there. And uh, if you got nothing to do, go out and grab a bite and, and talk photo with this guy. So. Sorry for interrupting the cool conversation. Never, no, that's good. Never, never good. good. No, we love it. Photography thing. Nope. No, no, no apologies. Love it. So, all right, you guys, have a great weekend. Yep. Veterans Day is Monday, so don't forget. Um, I know that we're at Anthem right now, but I'm just going to put it out there. If you are a veteran, go to Starbucks on Monday. They're going to take care of you. They're taking care of your coffee. They put it out there in social media and yeah. said, if you are a veteran, get over here, free coffee. I'm, so get yeah. over there. Monday, high five a veteran. On Sunday, say happy birthday to a Marine. Happy birthday to my beloved Corps. Love you guys. Too? No. And okay. uh, <laughs> my dad, my dad, and my grandfather. <laughs> okay, so you can celebrate. That. Awesome. Have a great weekend. Take care of each other. We'll see you next time. And I'm gonna try and get out of this chair right now. <laughs> oh, gosh, <laughs> I ain't kidding. <laughs>